All right, hello everyone. Um, today, the last lesson for the week here is I'm just going to go through sample ACT questions with you getting ready for the test, right? So just like the test is going to mix a bunch of concepts together. Every question, pause it, try it first, think it through, and then uh, watch the solution with me. So here's your first one. All right, uh, if you want to hint to, this one's a system question. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to try it. And again, this is uh, called like a system because you have two equations. And one of the ways to solve it is you can do what's called like the substitution method. So if I take this first equation and get y alone, so if I take this one and minus x from both sides, it'd have the statement that y has to be 30 minus whatever x is. And then uh, you can plug that in, right? So you can take this little statement and plug it in for y into the other equation. So that we end up with x times 1, no, times 30 minus x. Has to equal 144. All right, and then we can clean up the left-hand side sum. So it would be 30x minus x squared equals 144. Okay, and now we have a quadratic equation, which will come up a fair amount on the ACT. And remember with the quadratic, your methods for solving that are quad formula. You can graph it. You could try and factor it. Generally, I try factoring if it seems like it's going to be an easy factor one. Um, any one of those will require zero on one side. So I'm going to move the x squared and the 30x to the other side and write it in order. So it would be a positive x squared because we would have added that. Negative 30x because we would have taken 30x from both sides. And then the 144 remains on the right-hand side, so it's still positive. All right, so at this point, I will probably try, try to see if it factors. All right, so we could do this little setup where you know it has x and x. And then I just got to start listing things that multiply to 144. So one I know off the top of my head is 12 and 12. And so if we made both of those negative, uh, that won't quite give us negative 30. All right, then we just got to keep trying things. So I think 16 works, but that gives us 9. So that's not quite 30. So I just kind of keep keep trying, and I think eventually 24 times 6, I think that works. So if you keep trying different pairs, 24 and 6, so that would give us negative 24 and negative 6. And so if we solve that, we'd have x equals 24, x equals 6. Okay, and so basically, um, together they have to add up to 30. So we actually have two choices for x, but they give us this extra piece of information that x has to be greater than y. So um, that means x would probably need to be the 24. And if x were 24, then y would have to be 6. Right? If we use this one, then x would not be greater than y. So what is the value of x minus y? So the final step, just to make it fun, is here's our x, y values. We have to minus them. X minus Y looks like it is 18. All right, and if you didn't get all of that, again, try these, see if you can make some sense of it. Definitely, you got to know how to solve an X squared. That's going to come up on the ACT at some point. Okay, next one for you to try. So it says, what is the factor of that? So that means you have to factor the polynomial. And this is the type where you have to do what's called that long factor. Because it starts with a 2x squared, we can't just split it like this and say, well, it's got to be x and x, because that doesn't make 2x squared. Okay, so that's not going to fly here, meaning you have to do what's called that long factor. All right, so I'm going to walk you through that process. So you start by multiplying 2 times negative 5. All right, and then uh, multiplies negative 10, adds up to negative 3. So I think negative 5, positive 2, 1 positive and 1 negative. So taking this thing, I'm going to keep the 2x squared, and then we're just going to split this negative 3x into minus 5x and plus 2x, the two numbers we got over here. It would not matter the order. If you would flip those around in the middle, there would be the same problem. All right, and now we just group. So this is called factor by grouping. So you group them together and pull out of the front a GCF, all right, which I think is just x. In the back, there's really no GCF here. So we do have to put a number in front. So I'm going to just put a 1. 
and then use that number in front there to make one of the factors. So whatever is in front, that's one factor, x plus 1, and then the back part, 2x minus 5. All right, so that would give us, it says, following is a factor, so one of the factors looks like would be, would be that guy. Okay, another practice one for you. Give it a shot, pause the video, and then I'll go through it with you. All right, back with you. So this is just um, straight distributive property. And we just kind of got to remember some exponent rules. So the first one's going to be a 3, and then x to the first times x squared. You add those together to get x to the third power. In the front term, there's still this y. Out of the back one, so 3 times 2 is going to be a 6. And then x to the first and x to the first, x squared. And then we just have a y squared in the back. So if we distribute it, we get something. Let's see, I just got to pick the right answer choice now. Okay, it looks like H is going to work there for our answer. Again, if you get any questions on this, post them to the blog. But hopefully, um, as we go through them, you can try them. All right, so like try this one and then uh, come back and check your answer. All right, so 254 sales tax. You buy nine of these notebooks and you receive one free. What is the average cost for the 10 notebooks? All right, so what you really paid is nine times 250 because you got the 10th one for free. All right, so multiply those together to get 2250. So that's how much you paid. And then they want to know the average. So you would do that amount you paid divided by 10 notebooks and that would get you 225 per notebook on average in the letter d all right think it over then uh, on possibility once you have a chance to do it this one just knowing what this square means means we have two of these little things and so it's basically just going to be a foil question so write it as two little things and foil it out so the front two would be 3 times 3 and x times x. And then the outer 2 would be 3x, inside 2 also 3x, and then the last one is just multiply 1 times 1. So we'd have 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. Letter K. Okay, again, read this one, give it a shot. So this is actually the chapter 11 probability stuff, and we have three different categories, bread, meat, cheese, and you're picking one from each. One, one, one. So this is just that counting principle where I take the three kinds of bread times the five kinds of meat times the three kinds of cheese to get how many are possible. So it ends up being just 45 different uh, sandwiches are possible. All right, a little bit weird style question, but pause it, see if you can make some sense of it. All right, so on this one, if we do the square root, the key is you got to remember there's two answers to a square root. So besides being 7 for A, it can also be negative 7, right? And for B, it can be both 8 and negative 8, right? So like what is not possible? So uh, cannot be a value. So negative 15 could be if we added negative 7 and negative 8. Uh, negative 1 is possible if we did negative 8, positive 7. Same thing with 1. 15 would be fine, 7 and 8, you could add them together, but there's no way you could add them to get 113. So the one that cannot be is 113. All right, again, pause it, give it a shot. Good one for this is to draw a visual if you're not sure. All right, so we've got 0, we've got negative 5, and we've got 17, and we want to find the midpoint, so it's halfway. We know it's somewhere in here. And basically, the midpoint... If you ever have to do a midpoint, um, you just add them together and divide by 2. So here's going to be 12 divided by 2, and the midpoint's going to be 6. So visually, it's going to be right about there. It looks about halfway between them. Letter B.
Okay, uh, here's a pretty good geometry question. Uh, we've got a linear couple equations, and when you solve them, um, solve a system, there's three things that can happen. One, you, the lines will just cross, and they'll form like a single xy point as your answer. Um, if the lines happen to be parallel, that means they have no solution. And then the final case is you can have the two lines like lie right on top of each other, and that means they have infinite solutions that they share. Okay, so that's kind of what's being asked here. And so the best thing for me is to think about them, what their graphs would look like. And so it's helpful to divide by three on both of these so that we get them in slope-intercept form. So if I divide by three, I get negative two-thirds x plus eight-thirds. Divide by three in the other one, and I get two-thirds x plus eight-thirds. Okay, so what we'll find is that these aren't parallel because their slopes aren't the same, and they're um, and so basically that means they must they must cross, right? So uh, they're actually not perpendicular either because they're not reciprocals. But basically, you have a positive two-thirds and a negative two-thirds slope. So these lines are going to meet somewhere. So the you'll have two basically distinct intersecting lines. They're not parallel. Yeah. So you have two distinct lines that intersect. Okay, another good one. I, I like these. These make you think a little bit. So I think if you're stuck on this, draw a picture, right? But try it first, draw a picture, and then unpause the video. Okay, so I'm going to draw. Maybe I should try and make an actual straight line here, see if I can do this. Uh, nope, I didn't get a line. Oh, well. So that's going to be our, our 200 miles that uh, Kayla is driving. And she did it in five hours. So basically, 200 miles divided by five hours means she must have been going 40 miles an hour. So you could kind of see each little chunk along this road would be 40, 40 miles. Okay, but now she's going to go 10 miles an hour faster. So she was going 40 miles per hour originally, but now she's going to go 50 miles per hour. Okay, and so we can almost do this visually again. Now if she's going 50, right, I think it's just going to take four chunks because there's 50, 100, 150, 200. Right, so if she does it in 50 mile an hour, so each chunk is 50, then it's only going to take her four hours going 50 miles an hour, and so how much time she, she saved. So it was five hours, and now it's only four hours, so she saved one hour of time. Kind of an interesting question. So 10 miles an hour faster, could have saved herself an hour. Okay, last one for you to try. This is about absolute value, and if you just want a quick review of that, it means the distance from zero on a number line. So something like the absolute value of negative three, if you think about a number line, that's three units away from zero. Three units away. Okay, an absolute value of a positive number is just the number itself. Four is four units away from zero on our number line. Okay, so again, pause it, take a guess on this. Okay, so a couple things is A doesn't have to be greater than zero, right? We definitely have a negative number of that. We can do negative absolute value of negative two or something, so that one doesn't make sense. Um, they're definitely not equal, right? If A is greater than B, then that's, that can't be equal. And that actually kind of leads us to the answer that they can't be equal, right? If the absolute value is greater, um, it, there's no way they could be equal, right? Because if they were equal, we'd have like absolute value of 3, and that would not be greater than the absolute value of 3. Okay, and so we actually don't know that A is bigger than B. It's tempting to think that, but like certainly if A was, say, negative 5, and B was 2 or something like that, then it wouldn't be true that A is bigger than B. The absolute value of A would be bigger than the absolute value of B, but A would not be bigger than B. So B is our best answer. Okay, hope these made sense. Uh, the homework for this day, again, one more set of practice questions. If you get stuck on any of them, um, post the blog and I can get back to you. Um, hopefully these help give you some more practice, uh, get you ready for that test coming up Tuesday of next week. All right, thanks for watching.